two seconds here just to let everything catch up with us. Uh, and thank you. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today on Family Maker Camp. Here at Family Maker Camp, we are bringing you projects to do at home and uh, getting families making together, um, trying to help support and guiding parents and hands-on learning. We're featuring awesome makers here. Um, today, we have Mike Carroll from Scrappy Circuits. Uh, Hello. And we are hoping that we will have Chris Connors here in a moment, also from Scrappy Circuits. And so Mike is going to take us through creating what they call the five core bricks or five core blocks um, of Scrappy Circuits. And with that, um, Mike, I'm going to let you take it away. All right. Thank you so much. So thanks to Make Camp for uh, inviting us to do this today. And I know they have a lot of awesome events and you can find out all that information at Make, makercamp, sorry, .com. So Chris and I, uh, Chris Connors, who will hopefully be joining us soon, we're both teachers. And one of the things we, we love to inspire, we love to talk to students about tinkering and inventing and taking things apart, but there's always a price tag with that. And when you're talking about a classroom, oftentimes that price tag gets multiplied by 20, 25, sometimes 30 students, which can get to be expensive. So Chris and I really kind of put on our thinking caps and try to come up with a way where we can teach tinkering and invention literacy to students for a very minimal cost. Um, and that's when we came up with Scrappy Circuits. So I have my amazing high quality sign right there, Scrappy Circuits, and we have a website, scrappycircuits.com. Scrappy Circuits is basically a way of taking apart junk that you would find at the dollar store or something equivalent and understanding A, how that junk works, and then B, how you can remix and repurpose that junk to make your own invention. So that's the whole kind of ethos with Scrappy Circuits. There's a lot behind it, and there's gonna be a book coming out at some point this summer. So if you go to, again, that website, scrappycircuits.com, you can sign up for a mailing list and get informed when our Kickstarter is live on how to get that book going to have these bricks and a lot more. There's a lot uh, to the Scrappy Circuit Network, but we're going to start with the five core bricks. So the five core Scrappy Circuit bricks, if you can see that with some lighting, we're going to do our battery brick, our LED brick, a binder clip switch, a push switch, and a dial switch. So real quick overview. So our battery brick, our LED brick, so our battery is our electricity, our LED is our action brick, and we're gonna wire these two together. And then we're gonna develop three different switches. So we have our binder clip switch, our push switch, and then this one still has some alligator clips on it. Our, excuse me, our dial switch, we could say uses the actual housing of our LED T light. What's nice is we can build all of those five switches and start to learn about invention literacy with really just a small material list or maybe even a cheap material list. So we have our LED tea light. We have 11 small binder clips. They are these guys. If you have different size binder clips, you can make them work. The small ones just work a little better. Then two paper clips, which I don't have, but I'm sure most people are familiar with paper clips. I'll grab some in a moment. And then if you, and then you're gonna need a little bit of aluminum foil and then some cardboard. So what's nice is, oh, and then some sandpaper. Uh, this might be backwards for you guys, is, is, but I, uh, hopefully it's not. Is it Sienna backwards, the text? Nope, it looks okay, good. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, so with these parts, you can make your own scrappy circuit set. And what's really nice is, uh, wearing that teacher hat, I know I can raid my supply closet for the binder clips, the paper clips. I can go to the dollar store and buy one roll of foil and that would cover the whole class. I could take some cardboard boxes and use those. So the real cost is gonna be on the LED tea lights, uh, which are normally sold in two packs like this at the dollar store. So two for a dollar. So for about 50 cents a kid, and then if you're gonna add up all the other supplies around maybe a dollar a kid, you can make your own scrappy circuits. So we're gonna get started. The first thing you're gonna do is take apart your LED tea light. So I have one right here. 
and I'm going to take it apart. So first thing I'm going to do is take out this little tab that allows it to turn on. I can turn it on. You maybe can see that it's on, maybe not, but it's, it's, it's on. You're going to have to trust me with that one. And then what I'm going to do is open up this battery compartment. So open up the battery compartment and you see that shiny three volt battery in there. All right, I'm gonna keep going like that until it pops out. Now, these three volt batteries are very interesting. They look almost like a stack of a few quarters. They're really small, they're safe. Three volts of electricity is not a lot of electricity. So I can hold this at all sides, all angles, and I don't have to worry about it. One thing you do have to be careful with, especially if you're doing this with younger kids, is that nobody's chewing on or swallowing these. So um, if there is like a baby in the house, just be careful that they're not chewing on these, but otherwise touching them from all sides is gonna be very safe. So now I have my LED tea light minus the battery, all right? And this is probably, it's one of the first steps, but I would say it's the, also the hardest step in scrappy circuits. So if you're like, oh, this is beyond me, please stay tuned because I'm sure you'll all get it. But what we gotta do is you see that little cavity the little hole right in there by the battery clip. I just take like a little screwdriver, a pen, a, any straight hard device, and I just kind of wiggle it around until it pops open like that. All right, and when it pops open, the guts of your LED tea light are very simple. An LED, and then this black part is a plastic switch. When I take the LED out, the switch comes out too. So there's not much to the switch, it's just a piece of plastic that moves and removes one of the LED legs from the battery. So we can't really do much with that and we can't really do much with this, so throw it away. But now we have our LED and we have our three volt battery and we have our LED housing. So I'm just gonna put this to the side for right now. The, at least my favorite part of um, when I do scrappy circuits is this part where the kids kind of take apart an LED tea light and then they hold up their three volt battery, they hold up their LED and then they put it back together. And this might seem like a simple step for somebody who's maybe a, a master tinkerer and has done a lot. But it, I remember in Miss Miller's sixth grade class, the first time I got a light to light up. And I know a lot of people remember that first time. And I know I remember seeing a lot of kids getting super excited about getting their LEDs to light up. So just making a little LED throwy and putting it back together and just understanding that simple circuit concept of electricity is really important. So we're gonna do our battery brick first, our battery brick. So I got a little sign made, our battery brick. And this is what the battery brick looks like. Just looking at it, you can tell you're gonna need some cardboard you're gonna need your three volt battery and you're gonna need three binder clips. What's kind of interesting about this is two of the binder clips are gonna work as what we call terminals. So this is right here where I'm holding is gonna be our positive terminal for our battery. And this where I'm holding now is gonna be the negative terminal for our battery. This one on top really just holds everything together. So it doesn't perform kind of an electrical function. So I have a little bit of cardboard right here. There is no perfect size for cutting these uh, these cardboard bricks. I just kind of estimate a few inches by a few inches. That should be good. That might be a little too much. If it's a little too much, we'll just snip some off. So then you're gonna get your three binder clips. First binder clip is gonna go like that and slap it down. So remember I said this is probably too much, it is too much. I'm gonna cut my cardboard again right around here because I want my binder clip not to touch the other binder clip, but to be near it. Oops. So that is a great start for our battery brick. I'm gonna hold this up for a little bit longer so everyone can see. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my battery and I can place either side up, either, either side down. I typically place the positive side, if you can read that plus sign there, the smooth positive side down. I don't know why, this is just what I do. And then what I do is I hold, I flap this binder clip arm on top. So now we have those different terminals, okay? Our electricity travels in and out of this battery through the top and the bottom. 
So the bottom part, the positive part is hooked up to this binder clip. And when I slap this arm down, the negative is hooked up to this binder clip. All right, I'm gonna do one more binder clip on top and that holds everything together. That holds it all together. And that right there is a finished battery binder clip. I'm gonna hold that up for a little bit longer. The last step with all of these is labeling them. Very simple. So I have my marker, here it is. First thing I wanna do is label the binder clip that's hooked up to the positive side and the negative side. Remember the smooth side is the positive side and then that rough side is the negative side. And then I'm gonna label it. Battery brick, all right? One of five core bricks for scrappy circuits is complete. The main essential one, the battery brick is complete, which is nice. The next one we're gonna build is the LED brick. Pretty simple, again, our system is one where we're using binder clips as terminals between these bricks. So I'm gonna make my LED brick, which is again, very simple. I just take my LED, stretch out those legs. All right, and now I'm gonna take a little piece of cardboard. and then hold it against my, uh, my LED against my piece of cardboard. Now, this one is the most fickle, which is uh, kind of a tough way to start is with the most temperamental brick. But what we're gonna do is a few things to make it a little easier. So I'm gonna take my two binder clips and before I even hook them up to my LED brick, I'm gonna open them so I can get their mouth like this. And I'm gonna take uh, this is a like a drywall sanding block. You can take sandpaper, you can take emery boards. Uh, if you're doing this with a large group, emery boards sell at the dollar store for like 20-ish for a dollar. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of sand the mouth of it. Open it up a little bit. I don't wanna get this on my laptop, but just sand the mouth of it. And the goal is to get a little silver peeking through. So it's not all black, get a little silver in there. I'm gonna do it with both binder clips. So again, you kind of flap them open. I've heard people call these butterfly clips, a lot of different names. Give them a little sand, make sure I get in that mouth, get all different angles. And then again, I want, hopefully you can see it's just a little silvery sheen to them by removing that black paint. The next thing we're gonna do is take just a little wad of tin foil. I'm gonna rip it like this big, rip it in half. Notice there's not a lot of measuring with scrappy circuits. There's not a lot of, it has to be exactly this size. Um, part of the process of scrappy circuits is making it and it doesn't work and you make it again until it works. But there's an understanding there and that is a real important part. So if you rip something too big, too small, not the end of the world. That's why we're using scraps. And then I'm gonna take my LED and just kind of wrap this around one leg and give it a little pitch. Take my other piece, just fold it over a few times, wrap it around my other leg and give it a pinch. Aluminum foil for scrappy circuits is kind of like butter for cooking. It just makes everything a little, work a little better, work a little easier, uh, nobody complains. So now I'm gonna attach my one binder clip there and my other binder clip here. Another thing to do is just give it a little squeeze just to make sure every connection is nice and tight. All right. So now we have, I think this is the one I made, battery brick and our LED brick, which is right now unlabeled, but I'm going to label it. Now, LEDs are, they can be a little tricky in the sense that they have something that's called polarity. Okay. And polarity means that electricity can only travel in one direction. So how we hook these two up matters. And that's why I have a plus sign and a minus sign here, but I don't have that on my LED brick yet. 
So if you were to look inside an LED, you would see this. I know it kind of looks like a Mandalorian helmet. It is not. I have spoken. This is the way I can't remember the line from the Mandalorian, but I loved it. So inside you have this tall part that kind of comes up and over, and then this small part that just kind of reaches up. All right. The tall part that comes up and over is going to be your negative side, and the small part that reaches up is your positive. So you're not going to be able to see it. Actually, you kind of can't, surprisingly. You can see I had a good angle and I lost it. Maybe you can see, maybe you can't on my LED. But this side has that large part that kind of comes up and out, and that's my negative side. And then I label my positive side. Now we're going to hook these guys up. All right. The fun part. The best way, especially at first, is going to be to hook them up with alligator clips. Um, you can use any alligator clips that you want. Color doesn't matter. There is a way of making kind of a scrappy version of alligator clips called scrappy clips. I'll be honest, they don't work as well. It's a paper clip with some aluminum foil. This is great for if you're building them in school and you need to keep these because they can be a little expensive. You can say, all right, kids, you can take the bricks home and then you can make some scrappy clips at home or at school and take home, but I need to keep these. But as far as putting everything together and problem solving, if there is an issue, it just works a little best to do um, alligator clips. Another thing that's really important, and this might be hard to see, is you want the teeth of the alligator clip to grip onto the binder clip. If you go too deep, you're going to get into the mouth where it's really wiggly. You don't want that. You want the teeth to grip the arm of the binder clip. So I'm going to hook up a wire on each side of my battery. And then negative goes to negative. So I'm going to hook up the negative wire to the negative side of my battery. And then positive to positive. We have lights. So there it is. So I have my battery and my LED brick hooked together. This is kind of the core essential part of at least the beginning of scrappy circuits. Electricity, action. We have electricity performing action, giving light in our LED. But the next part and the part that I think is the coolest is controlling the LED. When I love, I wanna talk about electricity, when I talk about tinkering, to me, it's all about the switches. I love switches. It's cool to make this happen, but it is 100% cooler to control it. So we're gonna make three switches, again, out of junk, not to be offensive to office supplies and cardboard, but junk you find around your house. So let me find my cardboard. The first one is the easiest, all right? I'm gonna cut myself a little piece. All right, this is probably too big. I'm gonna give it a little trim. And you're gonna take two binder clips. Now what's nice for these switches is you don't have to do any of the sanding that we did for the LED. Notice we didn't do it for the battery. You really just need to do it for the LED. So I'm gonna clip one to that side. And clip one to that side. And that is my, L or not my LED, sorry. That is my binder clip switch. Now the way it works is I'm gonna keep one arm flapped down at all times. And then this right here, this arm is kind of my switch. So when I flap this down, it is on. Our two arms are touching. Electricity is going to pass through our circuit. When I flip that top arm up, it's off. All right. And electricity will not flow through the circuit. This switch or this type of switch is called a toggle switch. These are the switches you're going to find in your walls at home because you're going to walk in a room, you're going to turn it on. You're going to do whatever you do in the light, and then you walk out and turn it off. And whatever you're doing, you're toggling it, and it's staying in that position. The push switch, which we'll get to, is going to be a little different. But this is, and it's complete, our binder clip switch. So I'm going to label it. As I'm labeling it, I'm going to talk about how switches do not have polarity. What that means is when I hook this up, I don't have to worry about where I'm doing it in the circuit. I don't have to worry about which arm is connected to which side because I just have to hook it up and interrupt the circuit at any point. So I'm gonna get a third alligator clip. I'm just gonna clip it to 
that part. And I'm just gonna disconnect right here, just because that's easy and convenient, disconnecting that, excuse me, clipping right there. And I'm gonna clip my wire back. So now I'm gonna hold it all up for you. I have a circuit in series. So electricity is traveling from my battery to my switch, from my switch to my LED, and then back through that from the LED to the battery, all right? It's probably a jumbled mess, but you're gonna have to trust me with that one. So when I flip my switch, my LED turns on, it's a little dim, but you can see it. And then I turn it off, on, off, on, off, on. So you can see a little glimmer in there of light. Um, I have a lot of light in the, in the room, so it makes it a little hard to see, but I think you guys can see it. To me, switches are what makes electricity cool. Getting an LED to light up is wonderful, but controlling that is amazing. And that's what leads to so many inventions is not just the flow of electricity, but the control of electricity. So we have one way to control it. Now we're gonna come up with two more. So I'm gonna disconnect my binder clip switch from my circuit. And the next one is a push switch, which let me get my, um, paper clip for you're gonna need a paper clip and you're gonna need two binder clips and again some cardboard so I'm gonna cut a little piece of cardboard and for this one you're gonna add some cardboard or I'm sorry add a binder clip right about there flap one arm down all right Actually, I'm gonna move this out a little bit, right around there, flap one arm down. Then you're just gonna take this paper clip and place it on top, okay? Place it on top of the binder clip so they're touching, but you're holding it. So now I'm going to take this binder clip and clip it right there, and now I'm holding it in place, all right? This is a switch that if we were to incorporate it, it would be on because my paper clip is touching my binder clip. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend this up. And if there's a little arm, which you can see there, I'm gonna bend all the paper clip up. So none of the paper clip is touching the binder clip. Now we don't have that touching. So now when I push down, that's where I'm gonna make that connection. So I'm gonna add this to my circuit. I'm gonna take my one wire, add it there. I'll take my other wire, add it here. Make sure everything is hooked up correctly. I see Chris is joining us. Hey, Chris, glad you could. Oh, one of these wires was a little loose. So it wasn't working for a little bit, but I, as you can see, I just tightened things up. And now when I push this down, it's a little dim. I'm gonna have to keep messing with it a little bit, which is hard, only have two hands. Hey, Chris. Hey there, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, I had some glitchy times. Glitchy times. No problem there. We've, we've all been there. We can all relate to the glitchiness. Yeah. So I'm using the uh, cardboard cutter. I don't know if you've talked about this tool. Did not. Um, this is a great tool. It says Canary is the company. And um, it allows you to cut the cardboard really easily. You can also cut cardboard with scissors. Um, but um, this is magic. It will cut you, though, if you're not careful. I've learned that the hard way. This is true. And then we have a whole bunch of things in our little bag of tricks here. I've got a couple different kinds of tea candles. Um, 
So like this one here, this one, if I remember correctly, has a flickering bulb and a, um, an actual toggle switch, in, which is kind of nice. Very cool. So Chris, we just to catch you up, we um, kind of intro the, the five core bricks. Okay. All right. And we have built the battery brick, the LED brick, the binder clip switch, and we are working on the push switch. I'm having, and the push switch is generally a reliable one, but I'm having a tough time with it. Hmm. Um, so that is where we are at. So we kind of talked about LED lights. And uh, LED tea lights. Up oh, here we go. It's working. The magic, the yeah. magic. So as I push down, it works, and then I let go, and it turns off. So this type of a switch is different than the binder clip switch, and the reason is because um, a binder clip switch is like a wall switch. You toggle it on, it stays on. You toggle it off, it stays off. This push switch is going to be like a key on a keyboard or a key on a remote control. When you're trying to get to channel 34, you just want to hit that three and then hit that four and then have the TV go. Or if you're typing a word, if you're hitting the letter Q, you don't want it to stay on forever. You just want to get that quick signal. So it just stays on for a moment. And then as soon as you let go, it releases too, or the binder clip or the alligator clip falls off. So those are our four of the five core bricks. And Depending on the age group you're working with, you might want to stop right there. You have your battery, your LED, and two switches, which is really cool. I have a good friend that teaches scrappy circuits to first graders, which I was amazed when I heard. And he, things that he does is he doesn't have the kids take apart an LED tea light. He just gives them the parts separately. And he does not have the kids make this next switch, which could be the most complicated, but it's also to me one of the coolest, which is the dial switch. All right. So you can you can buy the LEDs in a variety of different ways. These ones came on strips. Uh, you know, these ones came in bags. Uh, these are nice big, huge um, green ones. And I think this was Jameco, which is where these came from. And then these ones I got from a friend. What's nice is you can buy a lot of these. If you are buying them online, you can buy them in bulk. So you're saving money if you are, even if you're spending some money, you're really not spending a lot of money. So we are gonna venture to make the last of the five core bricks, which is the dial switch. You're gonna need a piece of cardboard a little longer and you're going to need some aluminum foil, about a strip that big and about a strip that big. And you're gonna need a glue stick which I know I just loaned one out to my daughter and I'm hoping I can find one amongst the junk. Chris, do you have one there that you can loan me? Well, what I have is something that I like a little bit better, which is aluminum tape. Okay. This stuff I get from the hardware store in the HVAC aisle. Um, and basically it's two inch tape that's made of aluminum and I can cut it with scissors pretty easily. But also, um, you know, if I cut up a bunch of it beforehand, I can have strips of it. And this stuff is great because it's already got the glue on the back of it. Um, and so you can also tear it too. Very nice. So if anyone knows me, I think within the first minute or two, you realize I'm pretty cheap. And uh, so I, you know, the, what Chris is showing you works great. But when you can get a roll of aluminum foil for a dollar and cardboard is free and then or essentially free. And then if you're a teacher, you usually are um, usually have access to glue sticks. This might be a thriftier option. So I'm going to spotlight myself real quick. And then I added some glue to each side. So I kind of added right here some and then right there some. And then what I'm going to do is put my foil right there and put my foil right here. And I wanna make sure that there's a space in between, okay? That space in between is important. And then I'm just gonna fold the edges so it looks all nice, just like all the prom photos everyone has on Facebook. Get the brick ready for prom, there we go. 
And the next step is going to be poke a little hole in the middle. If you have a screwdriver, this can be a little dangerous. Maybe if there's an adult by, uh, ask them. A pencil, make sure you don't have your finger right behind it and just kind of wiggle a little bit until you get that hole in the middle. All right. The next thing you're going to want to do is take your LED body, your LED tea light body, and this plastic part, kids love this part, by the way, but you just pop that out. You can put that on your LED. There's a lot of, I don't know, kids love it, but there's no real scrappy circuits function for this part. And you're going to take your LED body and you're going to, again, take your glue stick and add glue to the outside about half of your LED body. So like from there to there, about half, maybe 75%, about half to 75%. Add it to the outside, add it to the edge, and then as best you can, add it to the inside. When uh, Chris and I were originally coming up with names for these bricks, one of the, the ones that was batted around for this one was the salt shaker because as a lot of salt shakers work, you kind of have to turn them and then it opens up and you can pour your salt out and then you kind of turn them to close it. And that's similar to how this works. So I'm gonna cover again about 75% to 50% of my LED tea light body with foil. And then I'm gonna tuck this part in. Sometimes I've seen kids that just look at the pictures and they don't realize that they're not just putting a band on the outside. You want to tuck it inside because what's most important is this edge. This edge is what's going to bridge the two sides of our brick to make that connection so the dial switch works, okay? So back to this piece. I'm just going to get two more binder clips, one on each side. So I've got the uh, same process going, but I'm doing it with the, um, with the aluminum tape. All right. As I'm doing this, I'm going to spotlight you real quick, Chris. And so I've got the tape along the edge. I'm not sure I have as much tape as you do, but what I have is enough that it will bridge the two points there. Perfect. And that kind of brings up this idea to me that, you know, I think Scrappy Circuits, as we have a website, scrappycircuits.com, all the directions are there. This, um, this awesome video with Maker Camp. Thank you, Maker Camp. It's really more of uh, allowing you guys to learn how to take things apart. But every LED T light is going to be different and every tinkerer is going to be different. So every brick is going to be different. And one of my favorite things is searching the hashtag Scrappy Circuits on Twitter and seeing how I would say almost every single person that makes Scrappy Circuits makes it a little different. And that is totally more than fine. That's encouraged. I think it's wonderful. I think it's great to see everyone's variations on these ideas. It's inspiring to me. Um, so keep it coming. Don't feel like it has to be made this way. If you don't have aluminum foil, innovate. If you don't have small binder clips, innovate. All right. But it's just this general idea of scrappy circuits as opposed to a prescribed step-by-step -step process. So Chris, has that dial switch coming along? Well, what I'm noticing is, is the piece of cardboard that I picked is a little bit on the small side. Okay. So I'm going to move these binder clips out a little bit so that there's enough room for the dial to fit in there. And it looks like it'll fit. Okay. So while you're doing that, if you don't mind, Chris, I'm going to show you the way we're going to get our um, battery, or, I'm sorry, not our battery, our LED body attached to our brick which now i'm looking chris i think i'm on the opposite uh yeah. issue that you have i think mine's too big so goldilocks if we had a third member they'd be perfect but yeah, you're going to take your um paper clip and you're going to actually bend it down like that and kind of make a weird star and then take this piece this arm that isn't a loop and bend that down to make it into like a t so now you have a little t and i'm going to show you what to do with that T after I spotlight Chris so I can fix my mistake with less people watching. Yeah. So, um, and actually I have this. So what you may want to do is take a look at the binder clips that you have on hand and 
pick us a piece of cardboard that's going to be the right size. So even that's a little bit tight. So I think what I'll do is I'll just grab another piece of this cardboard. And I'll put the first one on. And then I'll space it with the second one. So I'm going to cut it here. And this is, um, if, I, if I'm correct, I'm pretty sure that this cardboard that I'm using here is a three-fold presentation um, panel. And so there's that. And then I'm going to cut another couple of pieces of aluminum tape. this back. I'm just basically I looked at it and I didn't like the way it came out and the materials are here and the materials are easy to work with so I'm just making them. that. That's going to fit in there. It's going to be pretty tight. So the, the aluminum that I have on here could extend out a little bit further. So. Um, and that's one of the, the things I like about scrappy circuits too is um, you know, I, I have a daughter that's going into first grade and we love to tinker. We love to build things. And we've bought these kits that every part is perfectly measured and pre-drilled. And then you accidentally hook something up the wrong way. And that pre-drilled perfect part that there is no replacement for breaks or is glued the wrong way. And then all of a sudden it's like, all right, well, this is a bus. And if you cut a brick that's too big, if you cut a brick that's too small, you just go like that and then you get another one uh, because again, all these pieces are easily reusable or easily found like cardboard and aluminum foil. So I think I have one that is a good size right now. So I'm going to steal the spotlight if you don't mind, Chris. Okay. And then I have my LED T light body. I have my paper clip that's kind of built into a T and then I have my base brick. All right. I'm going to put this right on top. I'm going to take my paper clip. I'm going to thread it through the hole in my LED T light body. And then I'm going to thread it through the hole in my brick. This is nice because this holds it in place. This doesn't perform any electrical function at all. It just holds it in place. All right. I'm going to do the same and step. then I'm just going to bend this down on the back. I kind of tuck it away. I usually like to tape it down just so it doesn't scratch anything or poke anyone. So I usually find a little tape. I had some tape earlier. Good tight fit is better. Good tight fit is always good. How's yours working, Chris? I think it should be okay. Yeah. Looks like it'll work. And then I'll put a little bit of tape on this. All right. And while Chris is working on his, I'm not going to spotlight myself, but I'm just going to remove my push switch from my circuit and hook up my dial switch. So I will demo that for you guys in a moment. There we go.
All right, I think Chris is doing the same as me. So I'm gonna grab that spotlight. So I have my battery, my LED, and then my dial switch. So now when I spin my dial switch, so the electricity touches both sides of, I'm sorry, not the electricity, the aluminum foil touches both pieces of aluminum foil, it's on. And you can see my LED is on. When I spin this, and this is why we also talk about the name of salt shaker, when I spin it, it turns off. So I spin on, turns on, spin off, it turns off. And the way it is off is because, probably it's gonna be hard to see, but if this tin foil that's on my dial bridges both sides, then I have a connection. But if I have it so it spins and it just breaks at one spot and doesn't connect like right there, then all of a sudden my light is off. So if I spin it this last little bit, it's on. And if I spin it this last little bit, it's off. So like I said, some people make this brick, some people don't make this brick. I love this brick. I think it's a fun way of using the LED uh, body. This isn't a common switch. Uh, we talked about how toggle switches like the binder clip a switch are gonna be found in your house. We talked about push switches or keyboards, remotes and so on. You're probably not gonna have a switch like this on your wall where you spin it, it turns on your lights and then you spin it and it turns off, but it's cool. And this is one of the things I love about uh, switches is I call it the easiest one step dance in the world. You kind of connect, things turn on and disconnect. And how we interact with our inventions, computers, electricity, it's really uh, an interesting uh, field to explore because it's really simple. Just two things that conduct electricity touch and that two things that don't conduct electricity don't touch. Um, so really, really fun. I see a question in the chat. How about doing a five, five, five timer? So my, the hat I wear is a third grade teacher. I was a third grade teacher for a long time, just transitioned to become an instructional coach, but I've always kept things very scrappy um, and very simple. So I have some five, five, five timers right here. I use them every once in a while. They're actually still in the bag because I don't use them a lot. I've built some cool things with them, but I always try and keep that per student or per learner price point as cheap as possible. And that's kind of the whole ethos of Scrappy Circuits. Uh, Jacques, uh, if you do anything cool with 555 timers and Scrappy Circuits, I would love to see it. Uh, if you send it to us at scrappycircuits.com, Twitter, Instagram, love to see it, but we really haven't explored that avenue. So, so by all means, please explore it and check us out. That would be kind of complicated um, making a, uh, a brick for something that has legs, the 555 timer has very small legs on it. Um, and that I think you'd, you'd need to do some soldering to make that work. And this is a, a very much a no soldering uh, project. <laughs> yeah, very simple, no soldering series circuits, which means the electricity always kind of travels in a, in a, I guess a circle, but as you can see with Chris right now, it's, it's never a perfect yeah. circle more like a, an oblong weird circle. But um, getting electricity to kind of travel and have it clearly understood where the direction and where the electricity is traveling is very important. And sometimes you don't even need a clip as Chris is doing. You put your two bricks together. Well, what I'm doing here is I'm troubleshooting it and I'm trying to figure out where the problem is. And if okay. I touch, if I touch um, the battery brick to the side of the rotating the, the dial, um, it does light up. But then when I touch the other side, so now I have to troubleshoot that and figure out where is, oh, there, okay. So it's because the cardboard is flexed a little bit uh. that, um, that it's uh, not working. Now, you have alligator clips and what I have here, um, is a spool of wire that I picked up at a yard sale or something. And um, so I have this wire and then with my scissors, I'm just gonna strip a little bit of wire off. And if you did this with um, um, wire strippers, that would probably be better, but you do what you can with what you have. And what Chris is talking about is, is having these bricks connect. 
And I kind of mentioned that earlier, but there might be people that are new to um, watching us right now. And alligator clips are, here's some, are generally the best way to get them to connect. They're very but consistent. They're very consistent, very reliable, um, but they also do cost some money. I wouldn't call these expensive by any means. But if you were going to send a class of 25 kids home with three or four of these, that would add up. So as Chris is doing is he's showing you kind of an alternative, which is what we're calling a scrappy clip. So Chris is taking some recycled wire and you can just twist the ends of the wire to your binder clip. You can twist it to a paper clip and kind of get that function of easily disconnecting and connecting. You can use aluminum foil for the body or the, uh, the bulk of your scrappy clip. There are a lot of options there, a lot of different options. So, and then as also, Chris, this, let me just show this technique here. Yeah. So basically I have the, the wire and I'm gonna pinch it together and then I'm gonna spin it around there. And I've noticed that some of this aluminum tape is conductive even through the adhesive on the back, which I find really useful. Um, and I believe that this stuff that I'm using today is uh, conducted through the adhesive. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tape over it to hold it. Usually tape it would be considered um, an insulator, but um, this stuff is not. It is a conductor. So I'm just going to tape that onto there. And then what I'm also doing is, um, uh, yeah, so I've got the wire and then I wrap it around there. If you if you wrap it around there good and tight, that's, that's useful. Oh, okay, that actually, pop this up. This one was a, is a battery clip. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that's on there. So while Chris is doing that, there was a question in the chat about why not upcycle the, the uh, LED housing and use that for another purpose. And you know, that we're all about kind of using scraps to learn. So that's why we built that dial switch or designed that dial switch using that. We would love to hear any ideas for kind of this flame, any cool switches, or even, I think I chucked it aside, even some LEDs have that kind of, have like a little part that holds the LED um, in the middle. Any creative ideas for that, we'd love to hear too. And then, Getting this battery to hold is kind of a trick. I think that'll work. It can be tricky. That looks like it ought to work. So Chris, while you are tinkering with that, I'm just going to, we built our five um, bricks. I'm just going to do a quick review of those five bricks and then kind of talk about some possible next steps. Chris is, is working on something that's very important, which is connecting those bricks. And when you're connecting those bricks, you can also start building projects. And that's what we're gonna talk about in a moment. So quick review, we have our LED brick lit up because I have my circuit working right now. We have our battery brick, which the uh, binder clip switch just fell off of their binder clip, I mean, um, just fell off. Our binder clip switch, really simple. Our push switch, which I didn't have a chance to label yet. And then our, I don't know if I made a sign for this one, dial switch, which is the last one we made. All right. Now with those five core bricks, we can build a lot of things. Okay. The main thing that's going to happen is for all of our inventions, they're going to light up the LED. So it, it's about a uh, great and ingenious idea that ends up with an LED being lit up. If you think about that, you might think that's a limiting, uh, limiting option. But if you think about it, flashlights, traffic lights, all the things that they all work the same, they function the same way. But what's really ingenious about them is 
is where they are applied. So you're going to come up with a switch. You're going to come up with a creative way to trigger that uh, switch or trigger that circuit that's going to light your LED, but you can have fun with it. And again, that can have a function or that can really be for uh, just like artistic or fun reasons. So Chris, I'm going to spotlight you real quick and I'm going to go grab something that my daughter actually made me using scrappy circuits. Nice. And I am, uh, I'm fiddling with this, trying to figure out which, I'm wondering if I flip the battery or, yeah, it is not lighting up. So let's see. All right, so there's a positive and a negative on the LED. If I test it this way, should be able to get it. All right, so that did not light it up. What about this? No, that's not lighting it. Okay, and so that should light it up. All right, why aren't you lighting up? So Chris, I, I like that you have your hashtag make together, hashtag scrappy circuits. I think you could put another one that is hashtag trust the process or hashtag enjoy the process because, you know, we're building stuff with scraps. It worked for me. There was a panic like, 45 seconds where my push switch wasn't working. And for some reason I got a new paper clip and that one worked. Um, and it is a process, but anyone that's an educator or a parent knows that learning happens from really a process. It doesn't happen from a product. You don't buy something, build it. And then, Oh my gosh, I completely understand this. You really understand it when you problem solve it um, and it doesn't work. So if you're building at home and you're having some issues, you know, that's part of the process. And everything is really transparent in scrappy circuits, meaning there are no black boxes. You can follow the electricity. You can test each junction with that electricity and then find the spot that it isn't working. And, you know, the, the journey makes it uh, the reward of the LED lighting up so much better. Trust me when I say that. So Chris, you keep going over there. I'm gonna steal the spotlight and show you this wonderful piece of artwork that my daughter made me. And we're showing this because Father's Day is around the corner. So fathers, if anyone wants to celebrate their fathers, this is a cool thing to do. Now, looking at this, this just looks like a framed picture. We have our pirate, colorful sail, looks like a very happy pirate. I like that. And the one thing that this is a little different is there's a hole in the back. And if I flop this up, you'll notice that there's an actually an, a yellow LED there. So what I did with my daughter is she drew this wonderful picture and we cut it so it fits inside this frame, okay? I like that. So we put it right there and then I took it back out, okay? And then I took the backing and put the backing right on top of the picture and flipped it over. Actually, you know what, I'm just gonna take this off for now. And then I kind of took my pen and I put it right where the middle of the sun was because that's where I wanted my light. And then I slid that out. And then I just poked a hole right there. All right, and I made it a little big, big enough to fit an LED. You think I used some scissors, you can use anything you want. Just poke that hole right there. And again, I purposely put that where the sun is. So I'm gonna make my sun light up. And then I just took my LED brick. I labeled the back with my positive and negative. So I knew how to hook it up when it was taped to the back of my picture. And I put it so the LED is popping right through that hole like that. And then put my tape. The back doesn't look pretty. It doesn't have to look pretty. And then put my tape down. And then I reassembled everything. So I took it's a wonderful piece of artwork and put it in my picture frame. And then I added the backing. And this picture frame is from the dollar store, nothing fancy. And I just have to push my pins down to hold it all together. And now I'm going to hook this up to a battery. So I'm gonna take my battery brick. I'm gonna take two alligator clips. And again, you could add a switch. You can really get creative and inventive with this. I'm gonna put a binder clip, I'm sorry, a alligator clip 
on my positive and negative wires or terminals, I should say. And then I have that binder clip or my battery. I'm going to hook everything up there. And we have liftoff, we have a light. So you can see that this is a really simple switch, a really, uh, not a, no, no switch right now, really simple circuit, sorry. And then it's, it's just lighting up a light in a picture. And I thought this was like a fun, cool project. So now I have this beautiful piece of artwork my daughter made me, and the sun is actually lighting up and bright, which I think is really cool. You can add a switch to your circuit. You can tape everything to the back. So it just looks like a, oops, one of my wires came off. So it just looks like the sun is lighting up and it's a normal picture frame. So you have a lot of options there, but I, I thought this was a fun, fun project to do with your five core bricks. And when you're done, just take it apart and build something else. So we have, um, we have our five core bricks we talked about. We have our cool project, which we kind of brushed over really quickly. And uh, I just want to kind of remind everyone of a few things, but actually, Chris, where are you? Did you well, get things working? I, is there is there a happy ending to this story, Chris? We need a happy I was, ending. I was afraid that I was not ah! going to be happy about it, but uh, right about the time you got yours going, I got mine going, so that was nice. And really, it was just a matter of, it's the flex of this brick. Um, was keeping it from working. And so maybe if I doubled up, if I had a more rigid, thicker piece of cardboard here, that would have worked better. Um, but if you were watching, you probably saw that basically I stripped another wire and I tested the circuit in various places to see if it would work. I, I went and got another battery to make sure that it wasn't the battery. Um, you know, I just tried a whole bunch of things to figure out what it might be that was causing the problem. And, um, and then eventually I figured out that it just needed to be um, held a little more tightly. All right. Well, I think that's a, a great, a great ending to our story. Um, so I want to tell you guys a few things. First off, all of our information is at scrappycircuits.com. Um, and again, we're going to have a book coming out toward this the end of the summer, summer-ish, hopefully depends on things, but uh, there's an email list there to sign up for our Kickstarter. So when it launches, it'll launch as a Kickstarter. Give us your email. We'll just send you an email when it launches, give you a heads up that it has launched. Um, and the whole idea of this is really to get kids building and learning and tinkering and taking things apart. So part of that Kickstarter is also supporting this website. So on the website, you will find directions to make all these bricks. And one of the things that's really important to Chris, myself, and our publisher is that that information is always there on the website. So supporting us in the Kickstarter also supports our website, which is not behind a paywall, allows everyone to access everything for free um, because, you know, we're being scrappy, we're being thrifty here. Um, so the book's going to contain a lot more information, but all the core essential parts will be free online scrappycircuits.com. So, um, and then I also want to thank Maker Camp, hashtag make together for inviting us. And if we haven't been fired yet, which I don't think we have been, we'll be back next week sometime and we're going to make some more bricks. Like I said, Scrappy Circuits is a whole network of bricks. So we made the five core bricks and that's like, that's just dipping your toe into the pool. We're going to cannonball into the pool next week. And we are gonna make the magic wand brick. And we are gonna make a brick, which I don't have here, which is called our buzzer brick. So right now with our core bricks, we have one action brick, the LED. So our circuits, our switches, they all control an LED going off. The buzzer brick is going to make a really annoying sound that you can control. And I have to see that Chris has one. I'm gonna spotlight him well, real this quick. Is the, um, a window and door alarm um that i picked up i assume at a dollar store or something like that and um it has a a magnet sensor and a squeaky um annoying buzzer and that's good very annoying buzzer so these things are great for tinkering uh i would not trust them to protect my house at all um they are a dollar each and they have a switch 
So any intruder breaks in, they just turn that thing off and then they, you know, they can have at your house. So not the best for security. Sorry, whoever invented it. But they are wonderful for in, uh, tinkering. So I have one here that I kind of took apart. So we're going to use this buzzer part to make a buzzing sound. And then we're also going to use the magnet that goes along the side of it that actually triggers it. When that magnet separates, that's what makes it go off. That magnet is gonna be for our magic wand brick, which is really cool because this brick is controlled with not touching it at all. You just wave a magic wand above it and it'll turn your circuit on. So for next week, if you can go to the dollar store, try and get one of these dollar store window alarms. Most dollar stores have them and they're a dollar each. Get a few because they're wonderful to take apart. And then you're gonna need some binder clips, paper clip, a little bit of aluminum foil, cardboard, all the regular pieces for us. So some cardboard, aluminum foil, some binder clips, some paper clips, but the main piece is this window alarm. So get one of these and we will see you next week at some point. Uh, Chris or Sienna, any final closing thoughts or notes? Um, I would say try it out and maybe share with us some of the things that you create. Yes, actually, Chris, uh, wonderful. Because if you go to the original Maker Camp website for this, they have links to Chris uh, on social media and links to myself. I'm scra at Scrappy Maker. So Instagram, Twitter, at Scrappy Maker. We also have a Scrappy Circuits account, which is at Scrappy Circuits. And Chris, you are? Connors934. Connors934. So anything you make, please share with us. Uh, I love it. We're actually, as I said, we're finishing up the book and there are a bunch of pictures from people on Twitter in the book uh, just because I love seeing the way other people have made scrappy circuits. And it's, it's really more of an idea than like a prescription of set of directions from one person. So I'm including as many pictures as possible from as many makers as possible into the book. Um, and it's really been a wonderful community around the scrappy circuits idea, which is wonderful. So Join us in those spots. And Chris, Tiana, anything else? Well, I just wanted to say um, thank you both for joining us today. And please check out scrappycircuits.com. As Mike mentioned, um, all of these links, yes, there we go. All of these links are posted in the Maker Camp events profile or uh, event listing. And that was posted in the chat. Um, we will have these guys on again, and we're going to be getting an event up for next week. And um, yes, thank you for joining us today on Family Maker Camp. And um, please check us out at makercamp.com and sign up. Um, we Maker Camp is brought to you by the members of Make Community. So um, please sign up at make.co and we can bring you more great programming uh, like we did today. And we will have these guys, um, we'll get an event listing up and, and get something scheduled for next week right away and like make that magic wand and the buzzer brick. So thank you both. Thanks yeah. everyone for joining us. Bye now. Thank you so much. Thank you.